So this session um, is on SOLIDWORKS CAM. So hopefully you are in the correct session. Uh, if not, now is your time to run. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about taking your designs from your screen to manufacturing, right? So I'm Stephanie Watson. Um, I'm an applications engineer here at Hawk Ridge. Um, I've been with Hawk since about uh, 2017. And before that, I have about seven years of mechanical design experience. And on the back side here, I have Ryan Navarro helping out with chat. Um, so just a reminder, if you throw it in the Q&A, um, we'll be able to find those questions just a little bit easier than, than in the chat. Um, but Ryan is a senior applications engineer. Um, who specializes in just about every product uh, SOLIDWORKS has to offer. So feel free, um, you can throw some, some tough questions at him, uh, see if we can play Stump Ryan. So what is CAM? All right, so CAM stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. Okay, so SOLIDWORKS CAM is CNC programming all done within SOLIDWORKS, which means if, sol if, if the SOLIDWORKS model changes, so does your programming, okay? So that's super helpful. There's no need to export, uh, re-import, things like that. So SOLIDWORKS CAM is actually powered by CAMWORKS. Um, so oftentimes if I'm teaching a CAM class, I'll pull up both SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS to kind of compare the two, um, just so you can kind of see how similar they actually are. Um, if you are on subscription, uh, you have access to SOLIDWORKS CAM standard, uh, which gives you the ability for two and a half axes mill machining. If you want additional functionality, um, we do have a SOLIDWORKS CAM professional as well, um, which offers uh, three and five axes um, along with two axes turning. Okay. Um, with SOLIDWORKS CAM standard, you have the ability to machine uh, parts. If you wanted to start adding any clamps or vices, that's where CAM Professional would come in. Um, so there um, you could check for collisions and interferences, um, again, within clamps and vices with the assembly machining. And then again, with SOLIDWORKS CAM standard, uh, you have the ability to simulate a toolpath. So this one can really save your butt. Um, so it will run through with the tool and the tool holder and basically simulate how your toolpath is actually going to machine your part. So you, again, you can check for collisions and gouges. So hopefully you don't crash your machine. So that's a good uh, <laughs> save your butt uh, move there. Um, another great thing about SOLIDWORKS CAM is automatic feature recognition. So it generates machining operations directly from a SOLIDWORKS native or imported geometry. So not only does it not have to be a native file, it can be kind of a, a dummy file, as I call it. So I'm sure you guys have all opened a part before that's not a SOLIDWORKS native file. And you've seen in the design tree that it just says, import in the feature tree. So it doesn't matter. Um, so even if it is kind of a dummy file, the automatic feature recognition will scan the geometry and spit out features that you actually want to program to machine, right? And then also we have the technology database, which can hold um, and give you the ability to reuse some of your best um, practices for manufacturing. So common operations that you use um, once you save them in the technology database. Next time they come up, it can be a quick, you know, few clicks and you're, you're off and running. So post-processors. So a post-processor takes your CAD CAM toolpath information and converts it into code that your CNC machine utilizes. Um, it's essentially an interpreter that's translating the language um, of your design into commands that your machine can actually follow. So on our website, you'll see we actually have a list of a whole bunch of 
uh, post processors that you can download and use um, if you need anything customized. So if you have a post processor that you want customized, um, you can fill out this form. We have an actual post processor team that will get in touch with you and get everything straightened out for you. If you need a full you know, custom post processor or anything like that, same form at the bottom of our website there. Uh, some somebody from our post processor team would would get in contact with you. Right. So let's get to the fun part. So SolidWorks CAM standard is an add-in. Right. So from the add-ins, you can see we have uh, SolidWorks CAM 2022. If you have CAMWorks and SolidWorks CAM, uh, you can only have one or the other turned on. So you'll just have to make that decision. And so the first thing when you're going through and program, programming a part is that you need to set up the machine. So here from the machine in the left hand side here, from the machine tab, you'll see I have my mill metric machines listed here. So that's because this part was designed in metric. If this would have been designed in inches, I would have my inch machine showing here. Um, in the technology database, you can go ahead and you can set up your specific machine. So, you know, if you have a Haas VF3, for instance, um, you would see that listed in your mill uh, machines available to select. Okay. Tool crib. So the tool crib tab lists all of the tools that I currently have in my tool crib. This is kind of up to the user. Um, you can set up a tool crib per job. You could set up a tool crib um, per machine, or you could set up a tool crib for every tool that you have in your facility. So it's really, it's kind of up to you guys, however you want to play that um, is how you can set up and use your tool crib. Okay. And again, post processors, just make sure you select the correct post processor um, for what machine that you have, okay? All right, so once you have the machine set up, next what you need to do is you need to set up the stock manager. All right, so in the stock manager, you're able to select the material that you want. So we're gonna stick with aluminum alloy. This is just a, it's a bike sprocket. So aluminum, it'll be nice and light. You know, you can use it on dirt or, or roads, whatever, whatever you're into. Um, and then we also have some stock types. So we have a bounding box stock type. And if you needed to add additional material for machining, you can do that from this window um, as well. All right. If you had a specific sketch that you wanted to use for your bounding box, you also have this option here where you can choose a sketch and set a specific depth for that stock. All right. Uh, we have a circular stock, which we're going to be using here. Um, also, you can import an STL file and use that as stock. Or if you have an existing uh, SolidWorks part, you could go ahead and you could search for that part. Or if you have a configuration um, within this part, you could also use a configuration. Okay. So here I'm going to use this, this circular stock. All right. Next thing is the coordinate system. So the coordinate system is setting up your machine zero. Okay, so you have the ability to choose a specific entity on the part. So you could grab, you know, a circular face, and it would it would choose that uh, face. You have part bounding box or a stock bounding box vertex as well. So here I'll just keep my in the center here. All right. So after you get that all set up, now's for the fun part, right? We can go ahead, we can hit the extract machinable features. So this is going through and analyzing our entire part, finding where the pockets are, finding any holes. So any hole that's bigger than 25 millimeters, I have it to set as a circular pocket. So we'll see that uh, in the feature tree here. So here we have a part perimeter, which is going around and cutting all of those spokes here for us. We have a circular pocket, uh, for kind of that main center piece here. Again, this center hole is bigger than 25 millimeters. Looks like it's about 76 millimeters. So that's showing up as a circular pocket. 
as well as all of these holes here. So not only will the extract machinable features um, spit out the specific features you want to machine, it will also group similar features or I should say, as long as the shape is the same and the cut depth is the same, it will actually group them together. So here you can see we have a whole bunch of these circular pockets all grouped into one here. All right. As well as we have a whole group here and a whole group here. So for these first few um, features, it's going to give us a, a rough mill and it's going to give us a contour mill, which is config which is considered a, a finish machining. Okay, so that's why you'll see it says rough finish next to it. For the drill, it's gonna give us a center drill and a drill operation, right? So once I have all of my features figured out here, which this does a great job, it looks like it has all of my features in here that I want, I can go ahead, generate the operation plan. So this is where it's actually going to give me the machining operations. So the rough mills, the contour mills, as well as center drills and drills, right? So we'll just get right to the point here. We'll generate the tool path. Okay, so we can see some of our tool paths. And you'll see if I hover over or click on these that we actually have tool paths generated for each one of those features. So we have the ability to simulate the tool path. So with the tool and the holder to kind of see how this is actually going to run, kind of just see out of the box, you know, how it looks. So here we're going to simulate the tool path. Okay. We have two modes. We have a tool mode and we have a turbo mode. So with the tool mode, it will actually show you the tool and the holder going through machining the steps of the part. It also tells you what operation it's on, as well as what tool it's using. So you can see you can rotate this kind of as it's running through here. Depending on your system, might look a little better, might look a little worse, um, but you should be able to rotate that as it goes through. Right? You can hit show difference and you can see, so you can see what's already been cut and um, if there's any gouging, things like that. So green is good, blue is leftover material, any yellow, orange, or red would be bad, that would be a, a gouge. So that's definitely not what we want, okay? So for time purposes, I'll go through and I'll just do the turbo mode here. And you can see we get just kind of a, a quick view of how our part actually looks here. So it looks like some of our, some of my pockets didn't quite cut all the way through here. So we might need to do a little bit of cleanup here, okay? So I also notice in the tree that we're going from a rough mill that's using a six millimeter flat end mill to a 10 to a 24. So this is, you know, a lot of maybe unnecessary kind of tool changes, things like that. So what I would like to do is I wanna actually sort the operations. So this is just a little bit more logical order, okay? So we can actually sort these by operation type, so it's going to put my rough mills on top, contour mills, center drills, then drills, and then it can actually sort them by tool as well. Okay, so I'll go ahead, say apply, and you'll see it reorders my tree in a little bit more logical order. Maybe this rough mill 10, because it's breaking up the 24s, maybe I'd want to move this up to the top. Okay, all right. So again, those holes that we had weren't quite cutting all the way through. So that's my rough mill three and my rough mill four. So I actually want these to be the same cut um, depth and parameters. So I can actually combine these operations together. Okay, so then I have just one operation for all of those holes where I can come in and I can actually change the specific cut depth, make sure that it clears it. I can apply it to all of my features here and I can say okay to get that to actually cut through those holes for me. Right? If I wanted to know how long this is actually going to take to machine, so here I can double click right on the part uh, setup and under statistics here, it looks like it's going to take about 28 minutes, 28 and a half minutes. Okay. 
So there's a few things we could do to kind of shorten that time. So if I just take a look at maybe my rough mill two here. So you see, this is just a, a pocket feature, right? It's doing a pocket out. Um, if I change this to a to a volume mill, so a volume mill is a functionality within Professional. So we'll see here if I change this to volume mill. Okay. Say preview. It'll rerun that toolpath for me. So you'll see this toolpath went from taking almost seven and a half minutes to down to just half half a minute, okay? If I take a look at the overall time here, so we should see that that time is cut yep, by seven by seven minutes. So there's a few things you can do to try and cut down uh, the overall machine time, right? So once we have this looking good, if I just do a quick little preview here, so it looks like it's cutting through everything. Next, what we'd want to do is we'd actually want to post-process uh, this out. So here I could say post-process. Here it just wants me to save this out. I'll say save, all right? When I hit play on here, it's going through generating all of that code here for us. And when it's done, I want it to open the G code in the CAM NC editor, all right? So here I'll green check this. And it always pops up on my other screen here. So here we have our our code. So if you needed to make any changes to your code, um, you could do that in here. If you're constantly changing something in the post processor, um, this is where you could fill out that form on our website um, and get that fixed so you don't have to change things all the time. Um, you can also put in a back plot here. Okay. And I know we are close on time here. So um, let me see. So I'm just going to kind of run this toolpath um, as I take a look at some of these chats here. So let's see. Ryan, if you have any good ones pointed out here. Just let me know. Um, we got a couple questions. I think the most relevant one was, can you share machines and tool cribs? So, um, yes. Okay. Yep. That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. So you can share. Um, so the technology database is located in a default location. Um, so if I just open up my technology database here under settings, oh, unless it's here, let me see here. So under settings, you can see where your, your default, oh, this changed a little bit here. Um, so you can find your default location uh, wherever your technology database is. So if you customize yours, you can put that on a shared drive. Um, just be mindful that if you have PDM, don't put the technology database in PDM due to read write um, access. So, you know, if you just have a, a network share drive, anything that people have access to, you can share your technology database. Um, so basically your coworker doesn't have to redo the work that you did. So, yep, that's a very good question. And then there was another one on um, the post processors. Um, if, if modifications included, and I, I responded to that just saying that, um, you know, th there's all the free post processors that Steph showed. Um, there's more even included with the software. There's a tool that allows you to generate your own if you need to and modify them. Um, and then we offer custom post processor writing as a service. So that's quoted out based on the machine. And um, if you do go that route and you pay for a custom post, then it includes a lifetime of changes. So anything like changing the line numbers or changing the format of the G code to match what you want, um, we, we do those mo kind of modifications included in the original price. Cool. All right. Uh, well, thanks everybody. I know our, our time is up here, but uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something. Mm -hmm.